So, here we are in Lesson 69, Part 4, Chapter 4, and we're going to look at the grip. And the title of this piece is Good Posture Leads to Good Grip. I've been to Augusta, to the Masters, to watch on three or four occasions, and if you ever get the chance, you must take it. Whatever hype you've heard, however good I tell you it is, you won't be disappointed when you go. So it's got to be on your bucket list or your wish list. Got to go to Augusta. It's everything. It's the British Open, Wimbledon, FA Cup final, all mixed into one. And they have a wonderful protocol there where you have a little green chair, and at the start of the day, you go and put your green chair where you'd like to be at the end of the day. And you can wander off and watch play. And then later in the evening, as the players come through the back nine, if your chair's by 16, which I tend to do, then your little green chair is there and you can watch. What I did the second year that I went to Augusta, I went down to the seventh tee. And I sat down my little chair, the rope is across my chest, and literally the tee block is just there. And it's quite surreal. For three hours, three of the world's greatest players would come into view. You'd hear them chat. I'd see them this close, 10, 15 feet away at most. I'd see them hit a shot and off they go. And for three hours, I watched all the great players come through. And what struck me as a teacher was that hardly any of the golfers that I saw had what you'd call a neutral grip. They had a strong grip with lots of knuckles showing and the Vs would be pointing over here if that's what you like to think about. The only two people that gripped the club I would consider in a textbook sense was our own Rory McIlroy and then Tiger Woods. They had perfectly neutral grips. Someone like Mike Kuchar, his left hand was turned over that much, you know? If his grip was any stronger, he'd probably have to play left-handed. So, you can appreciate if the world's best players have a strong grip, Dustin Johnson, world's number one pointing case, case in point, then you can tell that a strong grip is going to have an effect. So, never say never. There are always exceptions to prove the rule. But in the teaching industry, we like the grip to be relatively neutral or a touch strong. So, when I've placed the club down, I can only get my left thumb onto that club by tipping from the hip, as I said earlier. So I tip from the hip and lean forward, and there is my left thumb bone. So I've just drawn a little circle in the middle of my thumbnail, a little circle at the top of the thumb bone, and connected with a, a fairly straight line. So that's the way the good Lord made my left hand, okay? He didn't make me like this or like this. The left thumb is parallel. So by parallel, I do not mean on top of the shaft. It's right of centre. So I would consider this to be a perfectly neutral grip. And I'd be quite happy for all of you to grip the club a little bit stronger. It's not much movement, is it? There's perfect, there's a little bit strong. If I double it, I'm very strong, okay? So I wouldn't encourage you to be turned as far as that. That's Matt Cooch and Dustin Johnson for you, okay? Now they're pretty good players, obviously. Pretty good is not a, a fair... <laughs> a fair description, they're fantastic players, but with their flair, they are allowed to make compensations. And I do believe that Dustin might come into some trouble with his back later on, because when the club faces his bow at the top, as he is, the compensations are quite dramatic. But he's got such great talent and skill and nerve, he still makes him world number one. So I'm not criticizing him, I'm just saying it's a characteristic. So if the thumb is parallel, then the right hand fits it. One of the things I like to do with people is get them to spin a pebble across the pond, metaphorically. So we, we get the golf ball and we spin it across this imaginary pond. So just imagine that. There's my index finger spinning the pebble, you see? I could not afford to have my finger above the equator of the ball or below. There's only one place that I can spin this pebble from, and that's from there. Dustin Johnson spins pebbles from here and makes it work. Um, just Jordan Spieth spins pebbles from here, makes it work but ideally the index finger should be behind the ball. Now, the way the right hand attaches to the grip is controlled by the thumb. So I tip from the hip, the posture allows me to get the left thumb in line. And if the left thumb is in line, the right hand fits it. And there is the pebble skimming mechanism. I'm not on top, nor am I underneath. So that's perfect. I won't want anybody this way but I'm quite happy if you're a fraction that way. So look at that, that's perfect, that's a little bit strong, and that's Matt Kuchar, and that's Dustin Johnson. So just meet me halfway, there's perfect, there's Dustin, just meet me there, okay? So there's the club, tip from the hip, left thumb parallel, right hand fits it. 
and whether you're baseballing it, overlapping or interlocking, the principle of the parallel left thumb remains the same. Okay, so let's put that into the whole package and let's hit a golf ball. This is the 14th hole at Coeur d'Alene up in North America. The greens are floating green on wires. They actually change the position of the green if they want to. So, off of the club, tip from the hip, left thumb first, right hand second. That's giving me a shoulder line, I plant my feet. Now I clear my brain, I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna load the shoulder and release the shot. Caught it a fraction thin, the two putts and walked the next tee.